Voilà. Here we go again. Back to the office. And I've got some new furnishings. Right, so I'm slowly building up a, a nice little scene here to keep my timekeeping timepiece down below the GoPro here. Place to put my bins because today I've got some photos and I've just acquired a very, very hooky wooky desk, albeit made of wood, sort of. Uh, uh, just thinking of the carpenter's name now, cartoon character, but his name is Kenshi. And I've got a water supply which has a volume of baking soda in. Because what I've started to do, since I've been doing my vlogs, I've been munching on lots of sweet stuff, mangoes, as you all have seen for my breakfast this morning. Oh, ants, your little buggers. Oh God. Well, the dogs have followed me in, but I'll wait for them to calm down. Jambo, wait, piss off. Anyway, where was I? Yeah, mods and all oh, mod cons and that kind of thing. And what I'm going to do, um, I mentioned a new vlogger, Chris Kane. <laughs> and I've just been in touch with that guy. I've made a, uh, a bit of communications with him. Um, but it's quite, it's quite interesting. Anyway, on with the show. Van Lifers, Fire Angel, Urban Stealth Man, White Band Man. And if those two cool dudes ever, ever come across my channel, I hope they'll figure me out, they'll find me somewhere. ex -poyers, right? Because you did inspire me. Shut up. Wait. Behave yourself. No flea picking today. I'm not going to pick any more fleas out of it. Incidentally, here in Dole spent... 25 minutes on Sambol and he had more than half a dozen scattered. Actually Killer this morning had five of those little things. They're not fleas because uh, the way I see fleas is they, they're the ones that jump from person to person or garment to garment or animal to animal. These are not like that. These are like tiny, tiny mite like spiders and you've literally got a bust them or drown the buggers you pick them out and put them in water and drown them because they just crawl back anyway she had in one section of her feet right you know the soft part of, of the paws in one section Anjali her indoors took out no less than five of these buggers now they must have been drawing out some blood they must have gone in there but where they're coming from I don't know I just I just don't know but anyway I'm with Malarkey Productions. What was I going to do? Oh yeah, Van Lifers, Fire Angel, and you other guys. You call your vans a camper van, really? Okay. This is what you call a camper van. I used to own this, and I hope you can see it. Here you go. Look at that. A 32 foot Bedford dominant ex coal mine, it wasn't in public service, ex coal mine property, right? I think from around Wigan, Bolton, Burnley, or Blackburn, or wherever they used to be coal mines. And it was solely used to carry crew, work workers from the village or township to the coal mine and when the shift ended they were ferried back home. There's another little shot. I'm, I'm actually doing some, maybe you can pick this up, I'm actually doing some fret work on a table because I did a lot of fret work which I used to sell around shopping malls in the UK. That's another vlog. Killer running through the scrub again. Okay, there's another pick, right? Yeah, get a load. All right, get out of here, go on. <laughs> Killer trying to get on the act. And 
this is a bit of a darker view. That's me knocking a few whiskies back with the boomerang I brought back from Australia. This is a section where the shower unit and cooking area was. And behind me is a bedroom which I actually wood panelled. I've got a photograph of that somewhere. I'd, I'll dig it out and show you. I did a pretty good job on, on the inside of it. But anyway, how did I acquire this, right? I acquired it, I, I was reading uh, Exchange and Mart, of which UK folks would understand, buy and sell, you know. Um, and at the time I had an old Bedford van with a Peugeot uh, 405 engine, diesel engine installed in it. So it was worth about a grand and a half. The van was useless, but the engine was worth the money. And I saw this bus for sale, and it was over about 40 miles from where I lived, in a place called Ormskirk, right? I phoned the guy up, and he was trying to be, you know, oh, well, uh, I'm not going to shift on price or whatever. When I got to his house for the next part of mine, I saw this rig in the driveway, and I, I didn't know whether it scared me or what. But anyway, he spilled the beans. I couldn't understand it. He started telling me that he was uh, dealing in antiques and he needed to raise, uh, this is the reason he wanted to sell it, right? Uh, he needed to raise the money to pay off a court order that was made against him uh, through an an antiques deal. And uh, he was trying to be a, Sambo, go on, shh. He was trying to be a antiques uh, roadshow type of geezer, you know? But anyway, he wanted, I think it was uh, three grand cash. But when I took a look inside the, the bus with my ex-partner, I didn't want to show any expression at all. I was absolutely effing gobsmacked. It was all done out, of, sadly, but on one angle, pink. Pink Draylon cushions, uh, seating, curtains, velvet pink curtains right but the rest of it was the bees knees great kitchen range shower uh, cassette toilet uh, back-end bedroom which I later modified so it looked a damn sight better um, I I was desperate for it but I did not want to show any emotions at all so I said uh, you know to be honest and you tell me the clutch is, is on its way out right? you have to try and gas it through the gears because his son had just brought it back from Malta, right? And I thought, he's just give the game away. He's just knocked himself. He's just knocked the coach. Uh, so I said, uh, you know, it's not what I was going to expect. So I said, look, you know, I'll think about it. I'll give you a bell. And I knew for a fact that, you know, a rig like this, you need, it's, it's for few and far between. It's not the average Joe Bloggs form of transport. But I was traveling around the UK selling my fret work bits and pieces and artifacty stuff I used to buy from Bali, ship over and sell in shopping malls as well. Anyway, back to the bus. So I said, look, I'll give you a bell if I want to buy it. And I waited till late in the evening and I gave him a bell. And I said, listen, the best I'm going to do is I'll give you a grand uh, plus my van, the yellow Bedford. Right? <laughs> But we, we'll meet halfway. You need to bring the coach halfway to a certain spot. And we'll do the deal there, swap over, do the, swap the paperwork, and we'll take it from there. He did push me. He said, please, 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 I'm up, up the Kyber. You know, I need the extra cash. So I offered him 500 quid more, right? Deal was done. Anyway, he, we met. I took the coach on. I did, I did the... Um, uh, and I did the scene, you know, I, I, I ran this bus around for a couple of years, it was great. But I had a new venture and I wanted to go on narrow boats, and that's going to be another topic as well. I've, got, I've still got some photos of the narrow boat that I bought, that was a 40 footer, bigger than this coach. Anyway, the bus was brilliant, right? I had the coach read on, uh, and I, I went to Scotland, uh, Humberside, uh, around the UK, and I would park up in the uh, in the shopping centre 
subway parking areas for a week and I'd sell off a table all my words and, and what have you and make seriously good money you know and travel on occasionally I would get visits by the cops in the evening right people would report there's a bus here we think we've got travellers in the area or, or whatever right because I left it as it, it, it is on the photos as you see it outside always the curtains were drawn but I would always the first thing I would do is open the door yes officers blah, blah, step aboard the minute these guys stepped aboard and took we went, well, no uh, hippie feathers hanging around the place and dream catchers and all that kind of stuff and a shitty old wood burner. This had, it was the dog's bollocks. It, it had everything, this coach. Anyway, long story dwindled down for you van lifers. That was brilliant. I, I just, uh, another little episode. Oh, just check the chair again. I'm going to Dumfries, right? Uh, Fire end will, will, will like this. I'm going to Dumfries and there was a serious road accident on the motorway ahead. So we were queued up and a, <laughs> a camper van pulled over and Margaret, my ex-partner, put a brew on because it was a serious smash. She put a brew on and I'm drinking my tea and this guy's looking up out of his camper van looking at me. So I slided the window back and I said exactly what I've, I've titled this is. You call that a camper van? This is what you call a camper van. And he laughed his socks off, you know, it was good. We were stranded there for a good, nearly an hour, you know. It was about, I think it was a fatality. Anyway. Uh, narrow boats. I wanted to travel the canals, the cuts, you know, as we call it. So I needed to sell the coach. So I advertised it in exchange and mark. And I thought, I'm going to ask for a ridiculous price for this. So I put it in for nine grand. Nine thousand quid and, and I said first to see we'll buy right blow me and not two miles away from where I was living a guy he was actually on disablement benefits so he's screwing the, the English government for, for seriously good money and he turned up with his wife and he stepped on board we did we had to haggle but he stepped on board and I knew I'd sold it the minute he gave it all away on his face and his wife they were both heavyweights like overweight people but I knew he was, he was uh, pulling them all over the government's eyes for seriously good money bloody scratching again I have to stop that um, he did drop me down to seven grand right I thought you can't grumble at that John you know for what I paid for it the use I got out of it uh, and, and the pleasure of it I'm still having a topic today to show you guys I took the money and that bus ended up staying in the street. It must have got the, 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 the people that lived in the street really pissed off about it, you know. But I don't know what happened to it from there on. I hope to this day it's probably still on the road. Um, it, it was in very good condition when I left it, you know. But I'm going back uh, 20, 24 years, yeah, 24 years ago. 25 years ago, I, I bought that for you know. Uh, but I just thought I had to show you Van Lifers, Fire Angel and the other guys, the connection. Um, I hope someone will, will link me up with ex because I truly do admire those two. Um, I just saw them on, a, on, the, on their latest vlog this morning and they're in lockdown in a tent. Right, so I didn't open the vlog so I don't know what's happened to the van. Maybe the van's gone in for repairs or storage. But they're in a tent on the top of somebody's house. Uh, somewhere exotic, you know, with pantile roofs and all that kind of thing. Um, okay, well, no, come on. Say hello, come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go on. Yeah. Yeah. Foxy would like you. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to switch you off. I'll just move the camera now before I switch off and I'll show you the, the latest developments in my office right water storage desk timepiece to time my vlog right. see you later thanks I'll just show you the office as it, it's building its momentum office chair guard dog killer right 
mite stuff. Sorry about all the crunching of the, the grass. Anyway, there's my cupboard with a clock that I made myself, which was mentioned yesterday. Somewhere to put my bins, right? And look at this for a desk, eh? Handmade, jungle style. Now they don't come to a penny. And when I picked it up, yeah, there's still a few about. Take a very close look. Termites. See them? So they'll soon be gone because they can't stand the sunshine. So I'll put this table out this in the sunshine. Get rid of those pesky buggies. Take a swig of my uh, fresh water with baking soda, uh, a spoonful of baking soda to try and resolve this friggin' itching problem I've got. So, Sam, don't kill any more bloody cats. Oh, by the way, I think the rats have gone on strike. This is the second day I haven't caught one. So there you go. Back to the ranch. I'll give it 10 minutes here before I go back. See you later. <laughs>